folks, Ned here again talking about uh, Server 2008 end of support and I want to talk to you about a new option which is available right now. It started being available in October with the latest uh, 1910 version of Windows Admin Center. And that is the ability for you to take the storage migration service, which you know by now is how you would migrate from 2008 file servers to 2019 file servers. And that could be anywhere, on-prem and a VM, running on VMware, running on Hyper-V, doesn't really care or matter. But with a new option added to Windows Admin Center, and I'll demonstrate it right now, you can actually, instead of going and setting up new servers by hand and rolling everything, let us deploy you Azure ISVMs on the fly while you're doing your migration. So when you get to the spot of turning on data transfer, instead of pointing to the server that you spent the weekend building away from your family, you can now say, give me an Azure server and take care of all the provisioning and then we'll just carry on with the migration. So let's do this demo. I'm going to create a new Azure VM. You can see that I'm not going into the Azure portal at all. I'm still in Windows Admin Center, and it's going to do all of this work in the middle of the storage migration service workflow. So I'm going to pick a resource group. And I've picked a subscription. I'll enter in some name for my virtual machine. I'll pick a region to put it in. In this case, I'm going to put it in uh, US West 2. Pick some operating system that Storage Migration Service supports. I'm going to put in uh, some admin credentials. You can see that we are checking the validity of the password here against the, those matching or, and also against the rules of Azure ISVMs themselves. I get to the size piece. I can select uh, all sizes, but if you noticed, it started with a set already picked out for me. That's because it looked at the source machine and said these approximately match what you're migrating from. When it comes to storage, we automatically provision all of the storage for you. You can see that we're going to format it with NTFS there. I'm going to give some credentials to join the domain because this system is going to, when it's all done provisioning, join this new Azure ISVM into your own on-prem domain because you already have some VPN connection, Azure Express Route, uh, something that allows you to do so, and you want to use this VM, of course, all your end users who are going to it locally will need to get to it now remotely. So you can see I've got all this options taken care of. All the steps that I would do by hand in the Azure portal are now taken care of within the storage migration service process itself, and I never leave WAC. So you can see here, I'm actually creating the VMs. It's creating the interfaces. This is actually using real Azure REST calls to go to the back end and talk to Azure on your behalf. And it's going to take a while, so we're going to time compress this, create the VM, join the domain. And when it's all set here, I can walk away from this. I can come back to it. I can view status. I can actually close this whole browser, come back into it. It would resume right where I am because all this work is actually happening obviously in Azure. I can give up on this and decide I don't want to do this. And when it's all done, you know, in the middle of my transfer setup piece of storage migration service, I will have this brand new machine. And you can see right here, it's been customized and created and selected. All my storage is already provisioned. It's ready to go. And if I go look inside of Azure right now, I'll see under my virtual machines and my subscription that all of my uh, you know existing VMs are there. And this VM that I just created right here is there as if I'd done everything through the Azure portal itself. So that was the demo. Uh, when you're all done doing this migration, your users won't be able to tell, your applications won't be able to tell. As long as you've got an express route or a VPN connection, just like any other hybrid IaaS workload you'd run inside of Azure, uh, you've taken your migration and moved it to not just be an on-prem targeting option or even a hand-rolled-yourself IaaS option, but now the convenience of deploying IaaS as part of the workflow and your users won't be able to tell the difference. For more information, take a look at this URL. It's a guide on how to do these steps. And thanks very much for your time.